and gentlemen called Roma Daltrick and his goons, generously sponsored by Junior, are up to no good. If one could guess already. The target for this night was the independent dust shop from dusk till dawn. Owned by an older man who would do as ordered, hopefully having a good insurance for his dust and business. The door opened. The stage was set. The pieces moved. Both players are ready to counter the others. Do you have any idea how hard it is to find a dust shop open this late? Tortric took his cigar out of his mouth and asked sarcastically. The goons behind him blocking the door, another pointing his gun at the owner. The older hands are shoot up. Please. Just take my leader and leave. Calm down. We're not here for your money. Roman assured him with a smile on his face, turning to his goons and dropping it. Grab the dust. They did so. First, emptying their fine dust and taking some uncut crystals from the displays after kindly asking for them. Two to the left side of the shop, to the right, yet one would stumble upon their doom. A small girl, probably around fifteen or so, head obscured by a red hood, with a red cap attached. The further down one looked, turning darker and darker, until finally turning black near the ground. Classical music coming from her direction. This goon, in his infinity wisdom, did not choose to assess the situation first, or call over to his boss for further instruction. But rather chose something stupid in hindsight. Alright, kid. Put your hands where I can see them. No response. The goon threw his sword in another stroke of genius. Now she had to do what he ordered. Hey! I set hands in the air! Nothing. You got a death wish or something? He stepped closer, sword in his hand. The other hand to pick on the shoulder of the girl. Yes. She turned to him, pulling her hood down. Black, shoulder like hair with red tips replacing the hood. A pair of headphones over the ears. However, the goon was immediately more distracted with the beautiful, shimmering, silver eyes of hers to react to her question. After peeling himself away from her eyes and understanding the question, he then motioned for her to pull the headphones off. She understood the motion, did so, and asked again, What can I do for you? Promptly ignoring the sword in the man's hand. Put your hands in the air! Now! The goon was becoming immense. He really didn't want to rob a girl. 
especially not mine. He had some standards, yet she also shouldn't try to do anything risky. And with how she behaved up until now, that seemed likely. Are you robbing me? The girl stared at him in disbelief. Yes! Brothers, just hand over to Liam and stay down, girl. He talked, glancing at his fellow criminals. Oh, that's not good. She came to the realization that she really didn't want to be robbed after all of them just standing there awkwardly. Can you not? What? Oh, hello there. Salam alaikum. I don't know what that means, unfortunately. I know there's a cat called Salem, spelled differently. Indeed, hello there. Yes. I read the Ruby fan fiction for it. No, no logical reason. It is simply a thing I want to do. In this strange voice filter I have made. Because I am enjoying it, the process. I'm in the middle of one called the Green Voice. Currently, it seems to be in the gap in the first episode. But soon we will get somewhere further. Now then. Uh, no, I can't. Uh, is that a story or someone who me? Uh, this is a story that I'm reading. And the voice and things, yes, those are personal rules I have made for myself. Because it's just fun. I created this voice with a fun audio drama, the session I'm doing of a different fan fiction. And, well, I wanted to keep it and use it for something a bit more than just about two minutes of the text that this voice belongs to. So, this is an experimental thing currently happening. I'll see if it lasts beyond what I'm doing now. But continuing on with the group not understanding the situation. Uh, no, I can't. So hands up and roll it out. He demanded again, hearing as the others finished up with their sides of the shop. His employer probably looking annoyed to him and the still unstolen dust. I am so sorry for this. She apologized. He blinked before, then suddenly buying himself in the air and crashing through the shop and against the dust display before losing consciousness. He should have stayed in bed today. Okay. okay, 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 okay. Roman looked at his defeated goon, then towards the small girl who just knocked him out. Get up! He ordered. The other three are happy to oblige and avenge their comrade. May I ask your question? Yes, you may, of course. I will always answer questions asked of me. Why is my voice like that? Because the same voice filter I'm using that I created for a, uh, a demon uh, character that is in a different, uh, a different work that I'm turning into an audio dramatization. And I want to keep it using it for something. Now, typically, I'll turn it off for a brief moment. Typically, this is just how my voice sounds. Like, like so, but... 
for this, what I'm doing right now, reading fanfiction, I want to use this voice specifically. And to go in a little bit more of a sultry tone. And have just a bit more fun. As I said, this is an experimental thing I'm doing. <laughs> oh, I thought you were AI for a second. No, no, no. No AI here. I just didn't get everything on my own. I prefer it that way. It's just a very fun voice to do. It is overwhelming. Deliberately so with the reverb and echo going around in it. Think on some louder tones. The echo lasts for about six seconds before it fully fades out. And this is just a thing I find fun to do. Typically I read it in my normal voice things. Like visual novels and maybe some other things. But today is a special day. And so I shall continue for a little bit. Not sure how long. Anyway, continuing on with Ruby Rose was all things in her life considered having a pretty good day. Visiting Vale was always fun. Though it would be more fun if mom and dad at least let her go alone once. But going with Yang and Spy was also fine. And then just so coincidentally happening to get lost was also not that bad. Uh, finally getting some time and freedom from her family and the possibility to wander through a city she almost never gets to experience. And then, also finding a dust shall open up this tower. Now that just seemed like fate. So, in she went. Behind the counter was an older man with grey hair, smiling as she entered the open shop. Sir, could you tell me where the latest issue of what a huntsman needs is? Of course, just to your right, second shelf. The man pointed to the section of the shop, smiling at the fact that in his youth he read the same magazine. Quickly she went and found the magazine, not before thanking the clerk began to look at the newest types of anti-material rifles, dust bullets, and general huntsman equipment. How are you still so fascinated by these kinds of things? Salem asked them, slightly annoyed and generally not grasping why we always wanted to know more about weapons. still couldn't get her love. They are practically extensions of ourselves, showing more personality than anything else could. Salem was quiet for a moment, thinking. And yet Atlas soldiers all use the same weapons. Says something about them, doesn't it? Of course it does. And that's that they are all boring and unimaginative. I mean, if I had those kinds of possibilities, which you do not possess, she cut in. Still, I would at least try to build something new and devastating. Just imagine it for a moment. Ruby Dream are standing in one of those giant forges from the net, where all kinds of machines could help you create the most brilliant weapons. Her building the weapon of her dreams. Yes, yes, I am. Though I would advise you not to get your hopes up. We both know that this is not a legitimate possibility for you. 
sailors somehow always found a way to deprive her of the little joy she could find in her daily life. It was almost impressive. If it didn't suck so much for the person who shared her every thought with her. You could try to be a bit nicer about it. Ruby sighed, closing the magazine and putting her headphones on and putting her hood up. Starting some of hers and Sally's surprising favorite music from a composer long gone. Her having found an appreciation for him after her 15th birthday. But not before Salem almost religiously mad about listening to his symphonies every day. I will not. I am your teacher, not your mother. Salem reminded. And she liked it that way. Because Salem was a better teacher than her mother in some areas, while terribly lacking in others. Flicking through the magazine's pages and finishing it, she picked up another one. This being about different kinds of dust-powered airships, and which was best. Salem silent, and also presumably reading through it. A quiet moment, however, was disturbed by someone tipping on her shoulder. Ruby and Selim both wondering what the clerk wanted from them. However, as Ruby turned, she was not greeted by the old man, but instead by some weird guy with sunglasses inside the building and a red tie. A most disappointing sword in his hand. Yes. She pulled her hood down, her headphones as well, as he motioned her to do so. What can I do for you? It was not the first thing that came to her mind, but it had to do. Put your hands in the air, now! He ordered, uh, then noticing that his soul was way too close to her throat for comfort. Both her and Salem were shocked. Oh, not by fear, but more by the news. Are you? Are you? She spoke in disbelief. Robbing me? Yes! He shouted, sword shaking as he did. Ah, that's not good. Ruby voiced, luckily hiding her giggle before it escaped her. What do you think, Sam? This utter buffoon. How dare he even think he could possibly rob us? An enraged Sam screeched, Ruby already feeling the coming heavy. Can you not? Ruby said out loud to both Salem and this thief. Ah, uh, no, I can't. So, an ounce up and wall it out. He pulled the sword back as if he was about to strike. Eliminate this fool and use this situation to improve and test your hand to hand of the weapon. Your hand to hand technique. Hmm. Yes, Teach, but only because you asked so nicely. She added sarcastically, turning her attention back to the would be thief. I am so sorry for this. Infusing a good amount of aura into her fist and using the opportunity of a surprise attack, she quite literally launched him through the store. And you failed already. Salem added before she could even think about celebrating. Have you checked your surroundings for any more tests? No. Ruby admitted, her 
step becoming apparent as she stepped towards the downed man, finding three other men, two with the same style of clothes, and another third, more sharply dressed with a hat, all staring at their compass. Then, at her. Okay! The sharply dressed man rose to stint. Gamma! He ordered, both men charging her, another foe, though also being behind her, to whom she reacted in time, earning her a small praise from her teacher. Not long after the first punch by her, the two last figures from the fight stood on the roof of a nearby building. A bull had rise behind the thief as a light shined on to Ruby. The thief, using this short distraction, to enter his escape vehicle, before turning back to the girl on the roof. End of the line, Red! He shouted, an unstable dust crystal in his hand, before throwing it at the feet of her, a shot from his cane following thereafter. Now! Salem yelled at Ruby's mind. However, the fight below had already taken up quite a lot from the girl, who normally didn't have to fight this much, and especially not this intense. Give me a... She thought, catching her breath in the moment, yet she could only watch as the shot connected. crystal exploded, the shockwave sending the exhausted girl through the air, breaking her remaining arm, and sending her down onto the hard concrete below. Her already knocked out and out of control of her body. Yet, just before she could hit the ground, noticed by not a single soul, her eyes switched colors from their usual shining silver, to a dark and grim like black. Her iris turned red as somebody else thought a single thing. Another death. And that's that. I wonder. Probably wouldn't have taken me 25 minutes to read if I didn't do this. In this voice much slower. There's some background activity. But that's fine. Let's, let's find something else. Yeah, that's not that's fine. That is the purpose of this voice, honestly. It's not meant to be fast, it's meant to be a little overwhelming. And thus a bit slower. Let's, let's switch it up to another little thing, let's see. Something a bit shorter. Don't let the show short. Let's go with this. No idea what that. Hmm. Background voices. Think I'll do just one and then I'll be done for now, because apparently other activities must take place soon enough of the day, such as life. So, don't let it show by Thornwood. Skipping the summary, skipping the notes, just going into the story itself, because I like to be surprised. Yang's life as a punching bag for cream and baddies and the like had done very little kindness to her body. is not picking up too much of the background chatter, but I'll be a bit irritating. <coughs> oh, that's catching my throat to be acting up. <laughs> when she was younger, she could brush off a lot and her aura took care of the rest. But now, in her mid-thirties, and too many years as a huntress, her body was starting to betray her. 
Most mornings went by. She was usually a little stiff. But once she got moving, she was able to ignore the daily aches and pains. No one was the wiser. No, certainly not her two kids. Now spending most of their days at the new Huntsman Academy, the Menagerie, Bridge Academy. With Mara as the headmaster, Bridge Academy had managed to attract mostly foreign students. But with each passing year, it was attracting more human students as well. Yang had quickly accepted the role of the lead instructor in combat at Bridge Academy. It kept her restless tendencies mostly under wraps. It also made her quite happier to have her close to home and not on as many dangerous missions around the remnant. However, it didn't stop her from bringing the fight to the dream home and around the menagerie alongside her students. So, maybe she pushed herself a bit further than she intended to. But that crop grim was about to take a bite out of one of her students. She had to wrench his jaws open so her student could escape. However, as Yang felt the sharp twinge in her back, she knew she would be paying back for it later. In the meantime, though, she had to get her students back safely to Bridge Academy. It was too late by the time Yang got home. She quickly showered and sighed as the aches and pains of the fight started to catch up to her. No worries. Tomorrow was a day off. When Yang peeked her head into the bedroom,
fake was holding her face now, though Yang couldn't look at her. How come? I... I'm not really sure. Every time I try to move it, it hurts too much. I think I overdid it yesterday. Play come in sympathy. Do you think you can roll over? Why? Can you try? Sure, I guess. Yang slowly managed to turn over onto her stomach and ignored the muscles seizing in her back. Yang heard Blake get off the bed, only to return a moment later. Blake leaned down and moved Yang's head off her neck, resting a gentle kiss of comfort there. Blake rested her hands lightly on Yang's back over her sleep shirt. Can I give you a massage? See if it helps any? What if it doesn't? Yang croaked. Then we'll try something else and keep trying until you start to feel better. That seems like a lot of work. And? You're worth it, baby. Now, are you gonna let me help? Yang exhaled. Yeah, it's worth a shot. Blake pushed Yang's shirt up, and Yang felt the cool oil of Blake's hands on her shoulder blades. Let me know if it gets to be too much. Yang gave her wife a thumbs up and focused on her breathing as Blake's fingers dug into her tight muscles. As the pain sailed her, Yang felt herself leave her body until she heard the desperate voice. Breathe, Yang! Yang sucked in a shaky breath, her burning lungs grateful for the oxygen. Good. Keep breathing. Please keep breathing. Blake pleaded. Yang focused on taking deep breaths until her lungs no longer burned. Sorry. Brothers, Yang. That scared the crap out of me. Sorry. Blake sighed. Don't be sorry. I'm okay. How are you feeling? Did that help any? After what just happened, Yang wasn't sure she even wanted to chance it. Yang? Maybe? Give me a minute. as you need. No, it's fine. I can get up. Yang? Blake said sternly. Take as much time as you need. I'm being ridiculous. You are not. Stop it. I won't have anyone talking about my wife that way. Not even you. Can you? Am I being too much? What? It's just Blake. You're not too much. Can you lie next to me until I'm ready? Of course, baby. Blake lay down and tucked her head against the eggs. Yang closed her eyes and tried to pull bravery and strength from her wife's steady presence. When Yang was ready, actually ready, she pushed herself up and only felt the general aches of sore and overspent muscles. She rolled her shoulders and smiled. Much better. Good. Blake said, kissing Yang's cheek. What do you want for breakfast? Yang asked cheerfully. Don't even think about it. I'm going to bring you breakfast at meds, then later I'm taking you to a spa. What? And don't you dare argue with me. Yang promptly shut her mouth. Good. Now, what do you want for breakfast?
breakfast. Tang smiled, love struck by her amazing wife. Sausage and eggs? Brick nodded. On it. Now, lie back, and if I see you out of bed, I'll sleep on the couch tonight without you. Shouldn't I be the ones to sleep on the couch? And make your back even worse? Nope. I'll just deprive you of your addiction to cuddles. Do you know all my weaknesses? With Blake cuddles on the line, I'll be sure to behave. Promise. Blake started to head out, but Yang held on to her wife's hand. Yanning? I... Thank you. I don't need thanks, but you're welcome. I love you, and I hate seeing you in pain. But I'd much rather you let me help you weather it. Yang nodded. You are incredible, babe. I love her so much. I know. Now stop distracting me. I'm hungry. Go on, said Yang, watching the retreating form of the partner, the wife, the love, and for the millionth time thank the gods for bringing them together. Well, that was nice and wholesome, little sweet. And I think I feel my mouth drying up in a very uncomfortable way. So I shall leave it at that for today. It's an experiment. Forty odd minutes is fine. Is plenty. Ah, hello. Hello, hypnogram. Awake. Unfortunately, you've come up just as I'm about to wrap up. As I've been reading for 40 minutes and my voice is getting a little... But I was reading some fan fiction of the Ruby variety. Hello? Ah, uh, what's it doing? Martin's oh, got some weird things there. The camera. Hypnog Oh no. Ah, uh, you're communicating through these little emoji things. That is some advanced futuristic things that I do not understand personally. I am sorry. I have to scroll over them to understand. But it's fine. I do things. Well, actually, very irregularly. <laughs> I do not have a schedule. I don't know if I'll ever do this experimental slash voice again. Maybe, maybe not. But alas, all things must come to an end as well. That away and wrapping up and wrapping up for now. Let's switch up to the wrapping up screen as well. Thank you for joining me and have a nice day. Oh, who knows if I'll ever see you again, but that's fine. Indeed, hard to you. That's adorable. But 